All right, all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the SJP Files. I'm your host, Jay, and we're back with, you know, another great slate of playoff games to go over. Last night was an instant classic between the Los Angeles Clippers and the Phoenix Suns where Pandemic P made his appearance after a fantastic game one. Brooklyn and Milwaukee finished up their series in both game six and seven, which resulted in two Milwaukee wins after Brooklyn went up 3-2. The Los Angeles Clippers, of course, beat the Utah Jazz in the second round to make their first conference finals, and the Atlanta Hawks go through the Philadelphia 76ers to make their first trip to the Eastern Conference Finals in almost about, I want to say about, it's got to be like six, seven years since their trip to the Eastern Conference Finals. Because I know there was that year they lost to LeBron James. I think that was 20, I want to say 2016. Because I'm pretty sure that was the year, either the year they won the championship or the year before they won the championship. So like 24, like 2015, 2016, I'm trying to remember which year it was. But that don't really matter. Like I said, last night was an absolute instant classic. Last night was also the draft lottery for the NBA. We're going to go over that too. The the top 14 picks are really the picks that anyone really cares about. You get lucky in like the later in the later picks of the first round. Sometimes you get lucky in the second round. Nicole Leokic, Draymond Green. Um, I think Draymond Green was like pick 60. And I want to say Nicole Leokic was pick 48, give or take. But what we're going to talk about first is we're going to get the second round games out the way first. Last time I did, I haven't done this show since last Wednesday, so the 16th. So in the 16th, on the 16th, the, um, the Atlanta Hawks beat the Philadelphia 76ers games Five and game seven, Philly won game six. But the real story with this whole series is that Trey Young has proven himself to be a bona fide superstar, and Ben Simmons has proven himself to be a goddamn bum. That's what's happened. Ben Simmons has proven himself to be a goddamn bum, and Ben si- and Trey Young has proven himself to be a fucking superstar. He is a superstar, not an all star. He's a superstar. He is proving without a shadow of a doubt that not only, not only is he proving that, not only is Trey Young proving that he could ball at this level, but he's also proving that that two thousand. I'm trying to remember what draft year that was. Had it been like two, three years ago. So basically the 2018 draft. When he got traded for Luka Doncic. He's proving, yo. That wasn't a bad trade. That wasn't a bad trade. I'm just as good as Luka. And I don't believe that. I still would have took Luka first overall in that draft. But. Trey Young is proven because Trey Young has gotten farther in the playoffs than Luka has. Luka's never been outside the first round, and in Trey's first playoff appearances, in his first playoff appearance, Trey is in the Eastern Conference Final and earned himself a nice nickname, Ice Trey. And you could tell, and the reason why that nickname works is because the sheer audacity. That Trey Young had in game seven of this series. It's unheard of. The sheer audacity of his shot selection in game seven of this series. Trey Young was, I want to say, like three. Because for the whole game, Trey Young was five for 23 in game seven. He hit three of those shots. In the fourth quarter, his final shot, I believe it was his, yeah, his final shot, a three-pointer. At that point, he's either his final shot or his second to last shot. At that point, Trey Young was like, I want to say like three for 20. I want to say he was about three for 20 before he pulls up from damn near the logo to put this game away. 
from damn near the logo to put this game away and just just the sheer like gumption the balls the audacity to be able to do that despite the fact you're shooting what I'm not, you're shooting like about 20% from the field yet you have the audacity to essentially just pull up from the logo he was 5 for 23 from the field 2 for 11 from 3, 9 for 11 from the free throw line. He did have 10 assists, only had 21 points. John Collins had 14 points. Kevin Herter, a.k.a. the Red Mamba, gave you 21 points. 10 for 18 from the field. Bogdan Bogdanovich was essentially nowhere to be found. Danilo Gallinari gave you 17 points off the bench. But the real story of this game was Kevin Herter, Trey Young, and Ben Simmons. I know you heard me. Uh, I don't know if you noticed. I've also uh, started another uh, clip, another show, the Technical File Podcast. Quick little clips. Eh, not really a podcast because podcasts are more in long form. But this is quick little essential clip show. Just me talking shit about whatever hits my mind at that particular point in time of the day. And Ben Simmons, and you've heard me trash Ben Simmons. I know he had 13 assists in this game. Doesn't matter. He had 8 rebounds. Good for you. He was 2 for 4. You played 35 minutes and scored 5 points. And I know Ben Simmons has been making Trey Young's life incredibly difficult since he started guarding him. But this series should have been over in 5. I know Atlanta won game 1. Philly blew him out in game two, blew him out in game three. Should have won game four. Should have won. This game should have been over in five games. But for some inexplicable reason, the Philadelphia 76ers blew. Blew. At halftime, the score of this game was 62-40. Philadelphia 76ers up 22 points. Up 22 points. I think Philly Philly was up, I want to say, by about 25 points or so with about 15 minutes left to go in this game. So about three minutes left in the fourth quarter. And yeah, about three minutes left in the third quarter with the entire fourth quarter left to go. They were up by 25 points and they lose this game. Outscored by 40 to 19 in the fourth quarter outscored by 21 points in the fourth quarter of this game are you kidding me how the hell does that happen i'll tell you how it happens i will tell you how it happens it's very simple your second best player on the philadelphia 76ers is allergic to putting the ball in the hoop. And one of the reasons why this happened is because they started hacking Ben. They started hacking Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons went 4 for 14 from the free throw line. 4 for 14 from the free throw line. He goes 50. He, hell, Ben Simmons goes 7 for 14. It's 50%. And this game is in overtime. This game's in overtime if Ben Simmons gets you three more free throws for a 50% free throw throw percentage. 38 minutes, 8 points, 9 assists. I like the 9 assists. Could care less about it right now. Doesn't matter right now. It doesn't matter. Ben Simmons has torched his his welcome in Philadelphia. And I'm not going to spend too much time on this Philly game. And Ben Simmons just, he killed it, man. He killed it. He killed, I feel like he killed his career in Philadelphia. But Ice Trey is is making a lane for himself. Proving that that, what was it, 2018 draft. That 2018 draft. And there's another guy also making a name for himself in that 2018 draft. Proving without a shadow of a doubt that they belong. Trey Young is averaging 29 points, 10 assists in this playoff. 46% from the field, 33% from 
the three point line, forty one percent overall, not incredibly efficient, but he hits big shots when it matters. This is his first playoff, his first playoff run, and he's in the Eastern Conference Finals. First playoff run, and he's in the Eastern Conference Finals. He's a fantastic, fantastic player. And and the Atlanta Hawks have found themselves a franchise player. He is a franchise player. I wasn't 100% sure if he was a franchise player, but he's a franchise player now. Without question, he's a franchise player. But that's it. Philly wins. Atlanta wins this series in seven. And their game one tonight against the. You know, they play tonight against the Milwaukee Bucks. I'm trying to remember. Now, if I had some gumption. Now, this is game one. I know what I want to do. See, my heart is with Atlanta. My head says Milwaukee's going to crush them. Milwaukee should crush them. But I really want Atlanta to I really want to see a Phoenix Atlanta NBA Finals. I think we're going to get Phoenix in the NBA Finals, but I think we're probably going to get Phoenix Milwaukee. But I really want Phoenix Atlanta. Ah, I, uh, shit, I'm going to go with my head. I'm going to go with my head. I'm going to go Milwaukee in six because I think Trey could get you a couple games because I think Trey Kevin Hurd and them boys I think they could get you a couple games but this series is probably going to go five games I'm, but I'm going to give you know I'm going to give Atlanta some real props I'm going to give Atlanta two games so I'm going to say Milwaukee in six That that's my pick Milwaukee in six damn it really want it but I'm praying for Ice Trey in the NBA Finals that's what I want to see Okay, with Ice Trey in the NBA Finals, when the Eastern Conference Finals, let's jump over to the Los Angeles Clippers and their interesting sensations. The good vibrations coming out out of L.A., or there were good vibrations until last night. Paul George showed up. I didn't think Paul George could show up. I really didn't. I really didn't think that. Paul George could show up without Kawhi Leonard, and he showed up in back-to-back games. Playoff P was loud in Game 5. 37 points, 16 rebounds, 12 for 22 from the field, 3 for 9 from the three-point line, 10 for 11 from the free-throw line. Marcus Morris and Reggie Jackson showed up there right beside him. Marcus Morris with 25 points, Reggie Jackson with 22 points. Reggie Jackson has been a godsend for this team. He's had numerous playoff runs, but this is by far his best playoff run in years. Actually, screw that. This is his best playoff run. From his time in Oklahoma City, from his time in Detroit, this is his best playoff run. Last year, he averaged four points. I have five points. I'll give him the uptake. He averaged five points last year in the playoffs with this Clipper team. This year, he's averaging 17 points. 42% from the three-point line, 50% from the field. Reggie Jackson and Marcus Morris kind of alternate whenever the hell one of them is going to play. Somebody's got to come up big, and they just keep alternating as to which one of them is going to do it on a nightly basis. But the real story was the Game 7 performance of Terrence Mann. Donovan Mitchell did Donovan Mitchell things. Gave you 39 points. Rudy Gobert was essentially Rudy Gobert. He did play 42 minutes. Congratulations. 12 rebounds, 10 assists. I was not, I was never comfortable giving a guy who, I was, like I said, I was never, ever comfortable giving a guy who cannot average who can't average 20 points a game because I know he's like an all-time defensive stopper. But I've never been comfortable giving a guy who can't average 20 points 200 
million dollars. They gave him a five year, two hundred and five million dollar extension that kicks in, I believe, next year. In the 21 22 season. So, yeah, it kicks in this upcoming season. He'll be making $35 million this year. Well, next year, he'll be making $35 million. Then $38 million. Then $41 million. Then $43 million. And then a player option for $46 million. And who wouldn't take that player option? I would take that player option if it was him. So, his average salary over the life of this contract is going to be $41 million per year. You cannot give a guy who may, who cannot give you at least 20 points a game that much money. And I know he's a fantastic defender, but he doesn't make people pay on offense. His offensive game is too limited to make you pay for going small. He didn't make the Clippers pay for going small, and it cost Utah a chance to win a championship. Rudy Gobert is another one of those dudes who needs to enhance his game. Rudy Gobert is one of those dudes who needs to enhance his game. But Terrence Mann is the true hero. 39 points in this game. 15 for 17 from the from the field. 7 for 10 from the three-point. He had seven threes. Paul George, 28 points. Showed up again. Playoff he Didn't have a great, like, you know... Shooting performance, he's only 10 for 24, but still, he played well. Patrick Beverly gave you 12 points off the bench. He made an appearance in this playoff series. But Reggie Jackson, another big game with 27 points. The Los Angeles Clippers are a different team under T. Lou than they were over under Doc Rivers. They got backbone. This team has backbone. This team got fight in them. They got dog in them. Everything everybody was saying last year is what this team has this year. They got dog. They got talent. They were better, but they cannot be down 2-0. But them going down 2-0 to Phoenix is where their story ends. It's where their story ends. Because Phoenix is not Utah. Phoenix is not a one-man show. They got other people. Utah is a one-man show with Donovan Mitchell. They are a one-man show. If Donovan ain't cooking, they ain't winning. And you and Mil- and uh, Dallas. Dallas is also a one-man show. If Luke is not cooking, they're not winning. They're going to get blown out if Luke ain't cooking. And that's the main issue with who they're about to pl- with who they're playing now. The Phoenix Suns are just a better team. I Wholeheartedly, I believe it. The Phoenix Suns are a better team The Phoenix Suns are flat out a better team than the than the Los Angeles Clippers. They're not healthy enough. With Kawhi Leonard probably going to miss this series and you being down 2-0 and Chris Paul will and there are reports that Chris Paul could be back for game four. Yeah. This is a problem. This is definitely a problem. Brooklyn and Milwaukee. This was... I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this. Kevin Durant was fantastic in game six and seven of this series. He was, in, he was fantastic in game five. He was fantastic in game six. He was fantastic in game seven. Played 48 minutes in game five. Played 40 minutes in game six. And played 50 minutes in game seven. He played 53 minutes. He was gassed at the end of that game. James Harden also played 53 minutes. They, I believe they both played the whole game. They, Yeah, they both played the whole game. From start to finish, James Harden did have 22 points, but he was 5 for 17. Another bad playoff performance from James Harden. Kevin Durant, once again, making his case for he's the greatest player in the NBA right now. That he's the best player in the world. He wants that championship. Now, how I would say it is he's put the championship in dispute, is what Kevin Durant has done. If he had won this series... 
if they had won this series, then maybe I, I might have given it to them. If they if they won if they had won the championship this year with all their injuries on the backs of Kevin Durant, on the back of Kevin Durant. I don't know why I said backs, but on the back of Kevin Durant, yeah. I'd have said KD, yeah, you the best player in the world. Because I felt like he proved it. Because I absolutely felt like he proved it. But they ain't prove it. Ain't nobody. But Kevin Durant, he's put the championship in dispute. And now it's time for Le- and now it's LeBron's turn to come back and claim his championship once again. Because that's the trick. Can LeBron James claim his championship as the best in the world once again? Because if he can do it, because is is Father Time finally catching up to LeBron James, or is or are we on some are we on some other shit? Chris Middleton and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Giannis Antetokounmpo played incredibly well, forty points, thirteen rebounds. Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton were trash until the fourth quarter of this game where they both hit big shots. Drew Holiday hit like two big shots in the four, in the end of the fourth quarter, like with like a a bid and, and a midi and a mid range essentially mid range fade away to the on the on the sideline. And I know the commentators like the mid range is back, the mid range never left. The mid-range shot never left in the NBA. The best players in the game all still have fantastic mid-range games. Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, uh, uh, James Harden. Kyrie, I don't know about James Harden, but Kyrie Irving, Devin Booker, Donovan Mitchell, Luka Doncic. They all have fantastic mid-range games. It's the role players that are shooting less, that are shooting either three or at the rim. It's the role players, not them. We gonna take a quick break, real quick. All right, we're back. And uh, where was I? The Los Angeles Clippers and the Phoenix Suns. Games one and two of the Western Conference Finals have already taken place. Phoenix won Game One and Game Two of the MB of the you know NBA's Western Conference Finals. Ooh, excuse me. So I just ate some and eat some food. But uh in game one, playoff P shows up. Thirty four points. Along with Reggie Jackson gave you twenty four points. Boogie came off the bench for his first real action in this series. He was he gave you eleven points, but he was also minus eleven on the court. So was Marcus Morris. So was Rajon Rondo. Rajon is not having the impact a lot of people thought he would on this team. He is not playing well this off this postseason. I think he's had a couple good games. But this postseason has not really been going well for him. Not at all. Shooting 34% from the field. He only he's only averaging four points. Yeah, last year he only averaged nine points, but he was definitely a lot better. But you just feel his presence on the court last year during during that series. And you don't really feel it in Los Angeles. But like I said, playoff P showed up. But, yo, I give props to two guys on this Phoenix Suns team. Devin Booker, who has just jumped from... St- he wasn't even a star before before this season. Let's, let's be real. Let's be real about Devin Booker. Most people didn't consider Devin Booker a star before this season started. And he's gone from star. He has skipped all-star. He has gone straight to superstar. He is fantastic. Game won 40 points, 11 assists, 13 rebounds. And another guy, DeAndre Ayton. What more can be said for Ayton? De- he is doing everything Right. 20 points, 9 rebounds. He's doing everything right. This is his third year in the league. His first playoff, he's averaging 16 points, 11 rebounds, 72% from the field. Played, fant- he was fantastic against the Lakers. He was fantastic against the, the Nuggets. 
and Booker also in his, I want to say this is Booker's sixth year. Yeah, this is year six for Booker. His first playoff run at 24 years old, 28 points, seven rebounds, five assists, 47 points, uh, 47 percent from the field, 38 percent from three. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic for Devin Booker. Like I said, he's jumped from All Star from star. Well, he has made two All Star games, but he has essentially jumped from maybe not a star to a superstar. And I was having this conversation with this dude from work. Hey, man. He kind of looking like baby Kobe right now. Or Kobe Jr. I know people just call him Book, but he kind of looking like Kobe Jr. right A more efficient version of Kobe Bryant. He is right now the heir apparent to Kobe. Kobe was the most difficult shot maker in the, in the NBA. Didn't matter from where on the court. He could hit it. And it, and that conversation to me is kind of between Kyrie Irving and Kobe Bryant and uh, Devin Booker. But I lean more towards Booker, mainly because I just like Booker more. And I'm not the biggest fan of Kyrie's, uh, of the shit that comes out of Kyrie's mouth. So there's that. It's probably a bias on my part, but who cares? Devin Booker is kind of like, and he's, Devin Booker is far better on defense than people give him credit for. He's not a great defender like Kobe was, but he's serviceable defensively. He's not terrible defense. He is a serviceable defensive player, and I love it. And I love it. I've turned into a huge Devin Booker fan. I want to see this team. I want to see this team in the NBA Finals, and I think they're going to go to the NBA Finals. They're up 2-0. Reports are Chris Ball could come back in game three while there is no timetable of of uh, what's his name of Kawhi Leonard coming back in this series. Kawhi Leonard may not come back in this series while Devin Booker, while Chris Paul could come back in game three. And if he comes back in game three, I got the Clippers. I got the Suns going up. I got the Suns going up 3-0 and washing the Clippers in five because right now I want to because because I because I kind of been hit with this for the last two times I had the I had the Dallas Mavericks essentially sweeping them but they were the better team and you know Ty Lue makes some made some great in-game adjustments unlike Doc Rivers who can't make an in-game adjustment to save his fucking life and then you have Against the Utah Jazz, same thing. Injuries to Mike Conley Jr. To Mike Conley. Is it Mike Conley? Yeah, I don't know why I said Mike Conley Jr. It might just be Mike Conley Jr., but that's not the point. Made adjustment. Mike Conley hurt. Devin Booker not 100% healthy. Rudy Gobert being Rudy. And fantastic adjustments throughout the series from T. Lou. We'll see how much adjustments he wins. But I have the Phoenix Suns in six. I got the Suns in six because that's me essentially covering my bases. But I think if Chris Paul comes back in game three, I think this series is over in five. I think this series is over in five because Chris is going to let Book and Aiton just cook. Just cook. I don't need to score 10 points. I don't need to score 15 points. I don't need to score 20. Just I'll dish out the assists. Do your thing. Do your thing. That's all you got to do. Do your thing. And in game three. All right. Game two. There are some insanities in game two. Yo, man. This game was... The last, like, two or three minutes of this game took, like... Actually, like... It's like the, like, the next like minute and a half, two minutes of this game took, like, 30 fucking minutes. And I'm on the East Coast, nigga. We gotta, we gotta sleep. So I'm, not, so I'm gonna need all this replay to stop. If you can't get it in, like, the first minute, you got, like... For me, you got 60 seconds. If you can't see it in 60 seconds, the call stays. If you can't say a definitive, okay, it went off his hands, then 60 seconds. Get back on the court and let's finish this thing up. All the replays. Honestly, the Clippers should be pissed about the officiating too. I know they got a couple of breaks, especially with that Patrick Beverly, you know, essentially forced turnover on Devin Booker. He poked the ball loose. 
but the ball kind of grazed Booker's like pinky on its way out of bounds. So they gave the Clippers the ball. I know they, but all those, I know they benefited from that. But from all, but all those, you you know, stoppages essentially gave Phoenix free timeouts. Phoenix didn't have any timeouts at the end of the game. They essentially gave Phoenix like two or three free timeouts, which led to a alley oop dunk game winner from DeAndre Ayton. Devin Booker set a fantastic screen on a Vika Zubac. And Ayton went up for it. Great pass from Jay Crowder. Essentially right slightly above the rim. And Ayton just... Tapped it in, essentially. That's all Aiden had to do. All he had to do was tap it in, and it was over. And it took a minute. And once again, it took like 10 to like 15 fucking minutes for the referees to confirm that it's good. Oh, my God. Everyone and their mother could see it was good. Jesus Christ. Can we get on with it? The NBA's... And I, and I find the NFL's... I find the NFL's replay irritating sometimes. The only one that has really a perfect replay is tennis. Tennis has like the best replay in sports. They 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 have the best replay in sports, but the but the NBA's replay it's too it's it's too much. It's too bogged down, it's too much crap. And I really need all that crap to stop. I need to, I need people to speed this game up cuz if not for all these, you know, stoppages, the Clippers probably win this game. So they should be more pissed than anybody. They got hosed for the win. They got hosed and copped an L. It didn't help that, you know, Pandemic P made an appearance in this game. It's not Pandemic P's fault. It's not Pandemic P's fault that he missed two free throws knowing for and I was watching sports talk I was watching Undisputed this morning and Skip Bayless once again a double standard, once again not keeping that same energy. But because it's the Clippers and he likes the Clippers, he's not going to keep that same energy knowing damn well that if that had been Trey Young or if that had been Luka Doncic or if that had been Donovan Mitchell, he'd be, or damn sure LeBron James, he'd be killing them. But because it's because it's it's Pandemic P and his beloved Los Angeles Clippers, he don't give Pandemic P a pass. Get the hell out of here. That's one of the reasons I can't stand listening to Skip Bayless. But Uncle Shannon, Uncle Shay Shay, out here speaking truth once again. Out here speaking truth. Shout out to Uncle Shay Shay. I love Shannon Sharp. Love him. Absolutely adore what he does. That's pretty much it for these two games. That's pretty much it for these two games. It's 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 a wilding game. And I can't wait to see. Cause today is the today's the twenty today's twenty second tonight. Like I said, tonight we have the Atlanta Hawks. And the uh, Milwaukee Bucks. I got Milwaukee winning game one. I do have Milwaukee winning this series in six. Like I said earlier, I got Milwaukee in six. But I wouldn't be surprised if they lost. I would not be surprised if Atlanta pulls another one out and gets to the NBA Finals. I would love to see a Phoenix ATL. The Valley against the ATL. I would love to see that. But we had another interesting vote last night. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yes. The NBA Draft Lottery was last night. And that's it for that accent. The NBA Draft Lottery was last night. The Detroit Pistons was number one. Get, got you the number one overall pick for Detroit. So Cade Cunningham is uh, going to Detroit. My condolences, Cade. Detroit is where careers go to die. Well, not Detroit, but still, my serious, sincerest condolences, Cade Cunningham. Detroit's a terrible organization, and it's horrendously run. Houston gets the number two pick. They got lucky. They got lucky with this pick. Houston, Houston got so lucky with this pick because that James Harden trade was an albatross. And for some inexplicable reason, they managed to weasel their way into the second overall pick, which, who is most likely going to be Evan Mobley. Evan Mobley. Cleveland gets the third pick, another top five pick 
for Cleveland in like the last, I don't know, like five years or so. Jesus Christ. Another top five pick for Cleveland. What are we doing? What are we doing? With the exception of the like the 10 years you had LeBron James. Well, 10 plus. Eh, about 11 years you had LeBron James. You've done nothing with all these top picks you've been getting. Failure after failure after failure after failure after failure after failure. And we're still doing this. Orlando, Toronto is the number four pick. Congratulations, show Toronto. So I think it will, who do we have? We have Suggs and Green are probably going to go three and four. Orlando's got five. God rest the draft pick who ends up going to Orlando. Orlando is another place where a career is going to die. Oklahoma City winds up sixth. Golden State is seventh. From the, I got their, They got their pick from Minnesota. I'm guessing during the Andrew Wiggins, D'Angelo Russell trade, the Orlando Magic get their pick from, get the eighth pick along with, they have the fifth pick and the eighth pick. The eighth pick comes by way of Chicago in the trade for, I'm assuming, Nikola uh, Vucevic. Got you. Yeah. Yeah, Vucevic. I forget. I forget his name. What's his first name? I could look it up. I just don't feel like it. With Vucevic. Sacramento gets another top 10 pick at number 9. I'm not. Eh. Charlotte. Not Charlotte. Uh, New Orleans is 10. Charlotte's 11. San Antonio at 12. Indiana at 13. Golden State at 14. Golden State has the 7th and the 14th pick, maybe. If you really want to make another run at a championship, get Klay Thompson back healthy. You still got Draymond Green. Steph Curry. Steph fucking Curry. Proved himself to be one of the top five players in the league this year. MVP candidate. But, uh... I don't know. I don't know who they're gonna take. I really don't know. I have no idea who anybody's going to... The first four picks are most likely going to go Cunningham, Mobley, Suggs, Green. Is probably how that's going to grow unless somebody trades up or trades in. My sincerest condolences to Cade Cunningham for having to go to Detroit. Really. And it's not the city. It's the team. They are a bad team. Ever since the the Pistons, ever since the Joe Dunars left that team as the executive they have been a dumpster fire they did trade for Blake Griffin and you got about two great years of Blake Griffin and then Blake Griffin kind of the injury started catching up with him and he just stopped essentially he just stopped wanting to play there and who can blame him you were y'all terrible team bruh y'all bad y'all bad let me see if I can find y'all terrible uh, let me take a quick break. I'll be right back with you. And we're back after a very short break. I just needed to find a quick little mock draft for the top 15 picks. Like I said, Detroit Pistons probably going to take Kyrie Cunningham. 6'8 point guard from uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma State, my bad. Houston Rockets, Evan Mobley, center from USC. Cleveland, most likely going to take Jalen Suggs. I, I do not think they got too many point guards unless they're going to trade uh Colin Sexton or Darius Garland you cannot get another point guard Toronto most likely going to get Jalen Green who played in the G League this year Jonathan Kuminga is most likely going to the Orlando Magic at 5 the Oklahoma City Thunder taking Scotty Barnes Florida State freshman Golden State Warriors, Franz Wagner, sophomore from Michigan, Orlando Magic, Davion Mitchell, point guard from Baylor, Sacramento Kings, Jalen Johnson, Duke, power forward, New Orleans Pelicans, Keon Johnson, Tennessee shooting guard, Charlotte, Moses Moody, San Antonio, Josh Giddy, Indiana Pacers, James... Bon night, and Corey Kitsby. <clears throat> Everybody else doesn't matter. <clears throat> ah, Jesus Christ! Real trek is who's the biggest? 
the biggest winner in this draft for the Detroit Pistons. The loser is the Oklahoma City Thunder. Loser were the Oklahoma City Thunder. So congratulations to them. I'm not over I'm not I've never been like the biggest, you know, fan of this whole thing. But we'll see. We'll see how this whole draft process breaks down. We'll be getting more into it as the playoffs wind down and the champion is crowned. I am so in. Also, forgot to talk about this. Yo, Booker damn near Booker broke his nose. Booker broke his nose in 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 in, in game two. Well, he didn't break his nose. Patrick Beverly broke it for him with his goddamn forehead. Are you kidding me? He he probably gonna have to wear a mask to get this real thing done. And uh, I'm on Bleacher Report right now. Bleacher Report has put up some realistic trades post-NBA lottery. Let me check some of these trades out. OKC goes full Sam Presti with Dallas. Oklahoma City Thunder get Christos Porzingis, Dwight Powell, 2021st round pick swap, top six protected, 2021, 2025, ugh. First round pick swap, top six perspective, ugh. Top six protected. Jesus Christ, I don't know why I can't say that word. Dallas Mavericks get Kemba Walker. Um, when you trade one injury-prone guy for another injury-prone guy, I don't know about this one. I don't know about this. I wouldn't do this if I was Dallas. I, I would trade some. I would find somewhere else to get to get to, to, to trade Porzingis or Orlando in Sacramento. Orlando gets Marvin Bagley. Robert Woodard, the number nine overall pick, and a 2022 first round pick lottery protected. The Sacramento Kings get Jason, get Jonathan Isaac. Hmm. Uh, I don't know why Orlando makes that trade. I feel like they're giving up. I, I feel like. I don't know why Sacramento makes it. I feel like they're getting they're giving up too much. I like Jonathan Isaac, but I feel like that's too much. Marvin Bagley and the number one, number nine overall pick plus a 2022 first round pick. I think that's too much. I think that's too much. Which is probably going to turn into a 2023 first round pick because of the protection. But yeah, I don't know why Sac. I don't know why Orlando makes that trade. The Portland Trailblazers and the Philadelphia 76ers. Philly gets Robert Covington and CJ McCollum. Portland gets Ben Simmons and Anthony Tolliver. I would not mix this trade if I was Philly. I would want more if I were Philly. I like CJ, but CJ is not enough to make me give up Ben Simmons. And you know how hard I shit on Ben Simmons. But uh, that's not enough to give me big up to, to give up Ben Simmons. The Let's see. The, Phil- the Philadelphia 76ers and the... San Antonio Spurs, DeJounte Murray, Devin Vasili, the number 12 overall pick for Ben Simmons. I'm going to need some more picks to make that work. And DeJounte Murray is not exactly a great shooter, so I don't think, though. If I'm Philly, I don't do that. Charlotte gets Christian Wood, and Houston gets P.J. Washington and the number 11 overall pick. I would make that. I would I like PJ Washington, but I think I think Christian Christian Wood could be like a perennial All Star with the way that he was playing early in the season. I think he could be a perennial All Star. So I would consider making this trade if I was Jordan. And Golden State swings for defenses. Golden State gets Bradley Beal. They give up Kelly Oubre Jr. in a sign and trade. James Wiseman, the number seven overall pick. A 2022 first round pick unprotected. A 2026 first round pick top eight protected pending obligation to Memphis. This is a trade I would definitely do if I was Golden State. And I would consider and I would do it if I was and I would consider doing it if I was Washington. I might need one more pick. If they had one more pick, I, I would I might need one more pick from Golden State to make this a thing. But I would do this. If I were both of these teams, I would seriously consider this trade 
because Bradley Beal's essentially wasting his career down there in basically wasting his prime in Washington. And maybe he likes it there. I don't know if he wants to win. If he wants a shot at a ring, I would consider this trade. Get a new big three going because he's like a cross between Steph and uh, and uh, Clay Thompson. He's, I think he's as good. I think he could be as good a shooter as both of those guys, but he's a better playmaker than Clay is. Better off the dribble, better handles. So I think he'd be a nice cross between the two of those guys, and he's a good defender. Not a great one, but a good one. So I would definitely consider that trade if I were them. But I'm not them. So I would not. I would definitely consider this trade. I would definitely consider that trade. But, uh... Ladies and gentlemen, eh, we will end the show here. We will end the show here. That's it for the 2000 episode. I'm just kidding. All right, this is Jay, host of the SJP Files. And uh, we're going to be, remember, just put out a new show, The Technical Files, The Technical File Podcast, hosted once again by me. Just putting some work in, trying to get this whole podcast thing Bump it once again. Like, remember, like, subscribe, share. Let me you can hit me up on my email at the SJP files at gmail.com. You can also find me up on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Just type in my name, just type in SJP, and you'll find me on all of social media platforms. Once again, thank you for listening to the show. We're gonna play a little Ellis, clear my mind, and play us out. I just can't let you go. Lord knows that I've tried to You said I was the only one No one likes being like to You made this mess and left me with the pieces Now I wanna burn all the bridges between us Ooh.